how's it going guys? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to another explosive divide at Impera online battle. Today we have the Lusitani going up against the Etruscans and oh baby the beginning of this battle is shaping up to be absolutely insane because the Lusitani have taken a very mu very much a full vanguard deployable army. This means that they are going to be up in the face of the Etruscans almost immediately giving them no quarter whatsoever to prepare for the enemy oncoming marches. As you can see they have an entire line of vanguard deployed soldiers stretching the entire battlefield. They then have reinforcements on the far right flank and once again as well these guys are you know also elite infantry. These aren't like kind of weak soldiers. These are these tiny veteran warriors so they can definitely hold their own and basically hold the enemy at bay until their kind of core of cavalry and other missiles get into the fight and I absolutely love this style of gameplay. It really makes these battles exciting. Also I want to give a massive shout out to the guy who sent this battle in once again. Uh, he sent in the past two DEI battles and I just really appreciate it because each and every one of them have been very very exciting and fun. So I guess without further ado let's go ahead and get this battle started. We're going to kick off on so we can really kick off yeah let's kick off in slow-mo because I think the battle is going to be very 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 fast. And as you can see, for the Etruscan player, he does have a large amount of forces on this right flank. Uh, but I believe this faction is part of one of the DLC uh, factions. Uh, but again, their units are balanced enough to play against one another, especially in DEI. So that's absolutely fine. And these Etruscans have obviously a main focus on the Hoplite because they're like predated the Ancient Era. So, well not the Ancient Era, but they're predating the Grand Campaign. So again, their main focus is going to be on kind of heavy phalanxes, holding the front line, and then more cavalry coming into the sides and again even even their kind of shock infantry are still the spearmen right here as well who can yeah push forward and be very very aggressive indeed uh, as you can see though the Lusitani are actually holding the line right now I guess a lot of their soldiers were hidden and probably Etruscans actually they probably wouldn't have seen these guys until they did just edge a little bit closer and start taking a wealth of of javelin volleys and this is one of the strong things that the Etruscans do have on their side during this battle is the fact that a lot of their infantry have these initial javelin volleys, whereas the hoplites won't have access to this. So they're going to be able to soften up this center very quickly and almost immediately. And I think one of the psychological things that happen when you fight against an army that has Vanguard deployed this entire battle line in your face is just like, well, I guess I have to go forward, right? I guess I could back up, but then that just kind of gives him more of an advantage. So you kind of are like tunneled into going forward. However, this is going to allow them to get their cavalry immediately around this flank and they could definitely utilize this. Maybe try to get into the rear of the enemy position very quickly. They also have a very aggressive flank as well taking this side. So if I was the Etruscans, I would probably kind of give up this flank and just kind of like hold this line. They obviously have more men hiding in the forest as well. We can't see their entire force. But seeing that the Lusitani are going this aggressive, I'd probably just pull back, reconsolidate my forces, and kind of, you know, prepare to be a bit safer and just try and get into the enemy faces. They also have a line of Lusitani slingers as well, which are now in range. That is going to be a bit scary for these hoplites. And, I mean, honestly, the Lusitani could just kind of continue to fall back and just not fight these uh, these skirmishers. Because right now, their javelins are decimating them. You can see a lot of these phalanxes taking, you know, 10, 15 casualties, which will really come into play as the battle does continue. As you can see, though, the Lusitani heavy spearmen have thrown themselves forward and now fully engaged against the medium spears of the Lusitani, against the Etruscans. I should say. You can see them fighting pretty bravely. More spearmen looking just to completely envelop them. And unless reinforcements do arrive from the Lusitani, they are going to find themselves, you know, completely surrounded. If not care, if they're not careful. And especially this unit right here, there's no real way for them to reinforce this. So the Spanish could quite quickly, yeah, have this unit completely surrounded. They are obviously scaring off some of the archers. Uh, are these javelins? Yeah, these are javelins, so which are easy going to outpace this infantry. The speed of these guys is two. The speed of these guys is four. So they're going to be able to skirmish this unit down very effectively. And that's a little bit too deep. You can see the rest of our flank as well moving around. So I think these couple units are going to be broken. And as you can also see, it does seem like the Lusitani are taking heed of this. Taking headed, taking heeded, heeded uh, of this. And they're going to be moving their entire line down to this right-hand side. Really trying to avoid kind of a, an engagement they don't want to have. Rest of the Etruscans are now coming out of the forest. And we can now see them in more of their glory. More cavalry moving around as well. 
Lazy Lee's wrapping around and again, leaving the Lusitani up on this flank, maybe leaving a small detachment of spears in this forest, but besides that, just kind of abandoning this right flank, I think is a very smart move because it basically kind of throws a bunch of units, which will take a long time to get down to the main fight away. And if I if I was the Etruscans right now, I would throw my phalanx into the Lusitani, who just are not formed up right now. As you can see, the death and destruction of this behind enemy lines unit is just getting taken apart right now by a lot of the javelin fire. Um, yeah, we didn't really expect too much. We are seeing a full-on cavalry engagement though here. A lot of this skirmisher cavalry is getting a bit too close for comfort. Um, even though they do obviously have reinforcements here, but right there... Oh, I love this as well. It's kind of like an Alexander playstyle right there, throwing spears and also the general. I think this general's maybe a little bit uh, mismicroed right there. A lot of the skirmisher cavalry are actually getting caught up here, which is, yeah, a big mismicromanagement here because, again, they're going to take casualties. And if this cavalry comes flying in, that's going to be super scary as we do have the Etruscan cavalry just smashing into their back. Now, it does leave them vulnerable. This is easily a savable situation if the Etruscan cavalry stay here because they're going to get completely enveloped by all of this cavalry. And that is going to be just atrocious. The Etruscans definitely should have left a couple units of cavalry there. I'm not sure if that was a bait or a missed micromanagement, but at least Tani immediately take a huge advantage in this. Not only can they do this as well, they can also use all this skirmisher cavalry to help out, and there isn't really an escape. Obviously, the Etruscans can reinforce this fight with some more infantry, but... You know, for the most part, the Lusitani have completely surrounded this huge cavalry force. They're going to dominate this. This is heavy shot cavalry. The Spanish cavalry is not to be messed with. Um, and getting fully committed in here. Having javelins being thrown in as well. Like, it's amazing they also have javelin volleys as well. This is going to be hard. The Etruscans did very much rely on more of that heavy infantry. And this is really like the perfect opportunity for them to commit more infantry to this fight. Uh, that's kind of one of the only saving graces. Uh, also, we're not getting any more cavalry thrown up on this side. So right now, the Etruscans are kind of allowing the Lusitani to, to dominate this flank. And if they can kill that cavalry, that's going to free up so much. Obviously, we do have some horses being sent over to this flank. But it's going to be a bit too late, I think, unless they can get over here sooner. Especially, as you can see as well, the Lusitani using all of that skirmisher cavalry just to volley in into the rear of this cavalry so this is just perfect this is a fairy tale engagement on the flank and you need this uh this is starter unit just to get stuck in i mean that's obviously why they're here to move in uh, as they do reinforce but it's kind of just too late the initial shock damage was crucial and again, the main battle lines are still not holding. Also, over on this side as well, the heavy melee infantry, the swords of the Lusitani doing some serious work against the Etruscans. And you can see they are pretty heavily outclassed, actually, stat-wise. Right, yeah, I mean, these are obviously the lowest tier of their, their infantry, I believe. Only 10 and 14 melee defense going up against 19. And again, they have a higher melee defense, but the attack value is so much in favor of these elite Lusitani. However, again, the Lusitani can use this. They've really clumped up their formation. And again, I love DEI for this, and I love these players for what they're doing. Every single battle they've sent in, and if you want to check out the other battles, just go on the channel, uh, has provided for really interesting battle formations. And I feel like DEI does that in a wealth. Uh, the Lusitani are, are really just, you know, closing in this gap. And as you can see, the Etruscans are forced back to kind of clump up their formation and really prepare for this incoming flank. If I was them, I'd be committing all of this to this flank right now. All of these swords just lobbing them down. Somehow the Lusitani are even getting spare infantry back here. Uh, luckily, more reinforcements have arrived cavalry-wise, but it's just a little bit too late. And once again, the Etruscans are finding themselves getting 2 v one in these cavalry engagements. Which again, it's just going to be so painful. The soldiers are really going to be able to just, uh, yeah, just run them down. And again, even the Lusitani have infantry here before the Etruscans. This is dire. And the fact that they're not engaging, they, well, they can't engage with their front line. This battle is looking kind of catastrophic for the Etruscans. Because quite soon, you're going to have all this cavalry piling through, going into the back of these lines and... Uh, doing some serious, serious work. And you already see the Etruscan cavalry, because they're getting 2v1, they've got elite infantry in their back. This cavalry is just done for. It really, really is. And uh, yeah, not having this... And again, three spare units. These, re these re reserves had to get over here sooner. Uh, they really did. Because again, three fresh units. These guys are going to be able to get into the back right here way before any reinforcements can arrive from the Etruscans. And the thing is as well, the strength of the Etruscans is in these heavy hoplites. 
and they're just not engaging. It's, it's hard for them to engage, but, you know, it's been about eight, ten minutes, and they're only just engaging now. They definitely should have tried to force this engagement a little bit sooner, because this is where the strength of their line is going to come from. And maybe if they decided they didn't want to do this, maybe they could have replaced and put some hoplites on the wing. And as you can see, the Lusitani are just coming, flying over, completely trying to utilize this envelopment and get around the side. I assume the players are playing with like a, a, an anti-red line wall as well, kind of like something that I do uh, very often. Where you have to you have to attempt to give the, the enemy player time to like space to move around this red line is always the better way to play things. And yeah, all that Lusitani cavalry has arrived. You've got spare infantrymen which are able to stop any reserves coming in and they're crushing this flank right now. No remorse whatsoever. Heavy infantry pouring in and yeah, these phalanxes, even though they've done good against the enemy line, they're, they're going to be struggling now. And I think that morale is going to be ticking down quite quickly. Just look at all this cavalry, though. Winning that cavalry fight was so huge. It really was. Luckily, the reserves have turned up, but I think it is just a tad too late. And even if they do come in any of these sections, maybe try and scare off some of the enemy units, it's going to be pretty deadly. And again, the Lusitani just still have all these reserves coming around. Uh... I don't know if they're just completely outmatched from the Etruscans or they're just... I mean, I know the Lutani are an extremely strong faction. I've fought against them in a head-to-head -head before. And they are super scary. But right now, they are really dictating this battle. Luckily, though, the Etruscans have been able to reinforce some of their cavalry fights with spears. And in Davidia Impera, that does count for an absolute bomb. It really does. Whenever you can reinforce uh, cavalry fights with some spears, you basically almost guarantee you're going to win it unless you're fighting against some like the strongest Greek cavalry or some Persian cataphracts. And even then, you're going to slowly start to you know, tip the scale in your favor. Uh, so something you always want to try and do whenever you have the ability to do so. But beneath the mountains, more and more of the Spanish are just piling in. And you've even got the cavalry coming in now as well. And we're about to see this entire flank crumble to the dirt. And yeah, that's going to open up a lot of stuff. And I love this. The Tani are playing so well, honestly. They're just backing up from these hoplites. Like, this is exactly how you play. When you're winning on the flanks like they're doing and they're playing in such a scrappy battle... This is exactly what you do. You don't need, like, it's, it's important for the uh, for the Etruscans to hold this line, right? They need to keep their battle line together, but they're losing the left flank. They're being overrun on the right flank. So the Etruscans kind of have to stay here. They can't engage this. And the Lusitani are just like, well, I'm winning everywhere else. There's no reason for me to do anything else. I'm just going to draw your hoplites out like this open up gaps where my my numbers can come around and kind of you know penetrate in and obviously also just using these slingers really effectively i'm really impressed and then as soon as these units start to turn charge your men in because again this is such a disrupted line that you can break the phalanx the phalanx is only strong from the front and as soon as these guys turn around immediately just counter charge them and even if they turn to face your spearmen yeah, which they have now done. There's so many opportunities. You have four units here. They have three. Just start to come around and, uh, yeah, utilize this very effectively. So I absolutely love the play. Luckily, though, the Etruscans are breaking a few units from the Lusitani. If they can break this, I'll free up four full units to basically go and sturdy this point. But you can see the morale is already getting a little bit low on these phalanxes uh, just due to the fact that these spears have got around the flank um, and are hitting them hard. You know, you can see what their flank is exposed here. Formation has been breached. So the morale is dropping and you're going to see all four of these units just move in from every single side. And uh, yeah, that's the perfect way to disrupt them. And again, if any of these other phalanx is trying to help out, you've got all these slingers just piling in to more of the Etruscans. And look at that. The flank has been won. The left flank has crumbled. So many spare units now. So much cavalry that can be utilized. And even with the Etruscans moving in, just doing deadly, deadly work. Luckily, the Etruscans have broken them loose tiny units and they are doing uh, some a decent work you know, on the rest of the, the line. Like This kind of pocket has gone completely the Etruscans' way, but it's going to be very hard for them to sturdy the ship and I, I'd be very surprised if they can win. Again, just doing such a great job at breaking these phalanxes. Like, wherever this phalanx goes, it is going to get surrounded. And that's why, you know, phalanxes are just not OP in this mod. Like, they're good... But they're not like the be all end all, you know, you can really use like also look at this axe unit. I've never seen this axe unit before. What the hell is this unit? I guess it's this via tie? I don't know. There's only like a handful of them in the unit as well, but they look amazing. Look at that. 
Because you've never seen that unit before. It's like these guys, right? Uh, apparently they're medium spears. No, they are the yeah, they, they are the they are the RT. Yeah, the RT. That's an awesome loose funny unit for sure. More skirmishes coming in and just yeah, again picking away these phalanxes. The the phalanxes are still holding though. That's the thing. Like even though the phalanxes are getting enveloped, like they're still DI phalanxes. They're still holding, but they're just not going to be like unbreakable, like they are if you attack them from the front. Like they're doing a decent job. And I mean honestly, the Etruscans are doing everything to stem the bleeding and actually able to break a handful of these positions. Luckily, more reinforcements are now turning up and all this cavalry is now going to move around and really cause some issues. Yeah, you can see that this cavalry was mainly waiting for the, the, the uh, is that spears or more cavalry? The spears to arrive and basically trap the enemy general here, uh, which is going to be a big, big help. The reinforcements are arriving elsewhere and these heavy phalanxes are proving their worth, but the morale is dropping. Casualties sustained, formations are being breached. And that's going to be pretty dire indeed. As again, loose tiny units are routing, but it's just not enough. They're still not killing them. And obviously, you can see that the, the units chasing down this general. The general is fleeing for his life. But again, this cavalry is here to counter punch the enemy formation. And the fact that they're being chased off uh, is going to allow these guys to now come in. And that's exactly where the loose tiny general is making his way to. Surveying the battle lines with his bodyguard. And they're going to be going into the back of some of these phalanxes who are not going to be able to hold. I wouldn't be surprised if we did see them going into this northern place up here. Because this will break. And cause a bit of a chain route for sure. But again, they are going after this cavalry. Again, they've managed to catch the enemy cavalry here. But they, yeah, they really need to go into the back of this uh, charge. Because if they can break this phalanx, which again has not been micro... It's kind of been microed in, but needs to be pushed a bit further in. If this unit breaks right here, then it is just... Uh, yeah, that is GG. And we're about to see a, a brutal cavalry charge come flying into the back right there. Just murdering so many of these brave heavy phalanxes. Cavalry trying to do the same over here. And honestly, that would be a perfect chance to come around. A rally has been popped. A bra or battle rhythm has been bop uh, popped, which also boosts up a large amount of the, uh, the melee defense. But I just don't think it's going to be enough. How's the rest of the battlefield looking? A bit of a mess, honestly. This tiny struggling in some areas, but just dominating the majority of the other areas, honestly. I think this battle is way, way closer than I'm giving it credit for. I'm kind of, I'm kind of singing the Spanish praise, and the Etruscans are holding, like, and they're doing decently in a lot of areas. But I think overall, they're just going to kind of come on done. There's like, they're doing really good in some areas, which I'm maybe neglecting a little bit. But the overall battlefield, and like having all this cavalry still left alive, and you know, having having your generals still able to be fully protected, having a lot of spare units freed up, I think it's just gonna you know end up being uh, being a very good victory. But maybe I'm gonna be wrong. Maybe Etruscans can come back from this. We get a charge into the phalanxes. A bit of a suicide mission, but maybe our plan was to try and tie down the enemy cavalry so the rest of these guys can come in. Because right now the enemy cavalry is uh, yeah very open to being charged. The enemy general cavalry, half of it is stuck right here, and uh, they're gonna pin that down. And that's going to be lights out for the Etruscan general, unless he's like all the way out here, which could definitely possibly be out here. Um, yeah, he's going to find himself surrounded. Complete mass route on the right flank. That's going to see so many soldiers uh, now coming in here. And we've got more cavalry charges out on the flanks as well as the Etruscan infantry try their best to deal with the spears. But with the cavalry fighting them in the back. There's going to be no way they can really do much right there. There you go. Another unit does a break and fall to the wings. And yeah, the, the routing, the morale, the army attrition starting to kick in now. And uh, yeah, the Lusitani just having that kind of larger, more mobile force has come out massive. And I, I love to see that in Davidiet and Pera battles, you know. It really goes to show that, you know, having the strongest infantry in the game doesn't guarantee you... Like, obviously the Atrocities don't have the strongest infantry in the game. But my point is that they you know, have a very, very, like, impenetrable wall that the enemy can't break. So the Lusitani played very well. They played very aggressive. They used their mobility, their numbers, and that, that was really big in the end. Um, that was really big. Maybe not even their numbers. They could definitely have a similar amount of numbers in both these armies. But it was the fact that they had a lot more mobility in their army. You know, their, their spears were a lot faster. They were only medium shock infantry. Uh, whereas uh, the other phalanxes uh, are going to... You know, the heavy spears and the, the heavy phalanxes are going to be so much slower. Yeah, as you can see, their speed is one on the heavy phalanxes. Whereas the uh, loose tiny spears are like 
two to four, I think. And that cavalry fight really dictated how this battle did go. And I think that's going to be GG now. Only 20 seconds left of the battle. The last stand is going to kind of try its best to hold the line. But yeah, it's only a matter of time until this battle has been called. And yeah, the, the last remnants has uh, probably been broken. Honestly, the loose tiny have a lot of men left, honestly. This was definitely probably one of the more one-sided battles. It was only a close victory. And in the Bidia Tempera, you know, it's not the whole purpose. Like, generally, sides lose around about 4,000 apiece. But, yeah, generally, it's a lot closer than this. And, yeah, the Luz Tiny did a very good job in this a battle indeed. Just so aggressive with that infantry. You love to see it. And that cavalry doing an awesome, awesome uh, setup indeed. And, yeah, the kill-wise, it's just the phalanxes didn't do awfully. But they got kills. It's just... Unfortunately, that flank just went so poorly for them so quickly. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this battle. If you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. Massive shout out to KWZ for sending in these battles. Hopefully, he'll have more for me. I'd love to cast some more like Greek and Roman ones as well, uh, as we've had a lot of barbarians recently. So it'd be cool to see some of them. Um, but yeah, obviously anything I get, I'm more than happy. If you guys have a good replay, send it my way. Make sure you join the Discord. Link is down below in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next one.